Good morning. Or if you happen to be watching the recorded service, perhaps it's good afternoon or good evening. We are glad to be here with you this morning or again, whenever it may be. This evening, we, um, as we record, we welcome Jan, right? Jan, yep. We welcome Jan as our uh, observer today. And this evening, we have Teresa Campbell, who is serving as our liturgist, along with then the regular crowd. <laughs> so welcome to worship. Anything you want to add there, Gary? I'm Gary Ferner. I'm the pastor of Fairmont Community Church, United Church of Christ, <laughs> and we're glad you're with us today. And I guess I didn't introduce myself. I'm Stephanie Weaver, the pastor of Robinson Elmwood United Church. No matter what happened yesterday, now is the time to call upon God, to lay our lives before our Creator, and to proclaim God's wonderful deeds to one another. Now is indeed the time to worship. God with your whole heart, we come as mustard seeds of faith. Come and worship God with your whole being. We come as leaven for the world. Come and worship God with your whole mind. We come as treasures and pearls of great price, enriching the world with our witness. Holy One, we come before you with sighs too deep for words. We come with hearts overwhelmed by the world, by personal relationships, and by inward struggles. We come to praise your name and to be reassured of your unending grace. In this time and place, open our hearts to your presence. Open our hearts to hear your word proclaimed open our hands to serve you and the world. May our lives reflect Christ, who walks with us and gives us life. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Love God of 
When we fail to live as God's people, we are like flowers which give way to seeds, weeds. But God seeks us out, not to condemn, but to comfort, to forgive, and to bring us home. Let us stop playing hide and seek with our God as we confess our sins together, saying, Loving God, you search our hearts to see all the good, all the challenges, and all the obstacles in our lives. You remember the times we have turned away from you, the times we have forgotten we are your beloved children. Forgive us when we do not act as your faithful followers. Remind us we are part of your family. May your Son, Jesus Christ, intercede in our lives to bring us grace and healing. Help us be your servants and share your story with the world. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Beloved children of God, nothing in this life can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Receive the forgiveness of God and go forth to be the loving community of faith. Amen. Knowing the Spirit intercedes for us always, let us greet one another in the Spirit of Christ by saying, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. is what I say. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like This is the time of the service where we have a conversation with our young members or even those that are young at heart. Today, I want us to go on a small treasure hunt. Have you ever been on a treasure hunt before? It's kind of an interesting thing, but the key to the word today is treasure. And treasure is an interesting word as well. There's an old book called Treasure Island that maybe some of us of a certain age have read and like. Uh, treasure is something that we keep dear to our hearts, something we love. And I brought a few items that mostly adults would treasure. Um, I have my wallet here, which has some money in it, which we oftentimes can treasure in a way. Uh, for Father's Day, I got a Dick's Sporting Goods gift card that I can use on some uh, things. I treasure this. Um, My car keys, because I just got a new car, and it's pretty easy to treasure a new car, isn't it? It's, uh, but these are things that we have in our lives that are things. You may have some things that you love, a special toy, a video game, uh, maybe a gift that somebody gave you that was very special. But in a few minutes, Pastor Stephanie is going to read from our gospel lesson, and she's going to be talking about treasure from heaven. See, our relationship with God is a treasure, and it is more precious than any item we could ever have here on earth. More precious than a new car, more precious than a video game, more precious even than my Dick Sporting Goods card that I love so much. How we live our lives oftentimes tells the world what it is that we treasure. 
And so I encourage you as you head into this upcoming week to think about how it is that you behave and what does it tell the world about what you treasure. Treasure in heaven is our love from God in the form of Jesus Christ, the answer to every single youth message we've had since we started doing this in a lot of ways. The treasure that we have in heaven is in fact our relationship with Jesus and in our relationship with God. I hope that you can enjoy your toys like I like to enjoy my toys, but to know that God really is the treasure. Let us pray. Dear God, you are a treasure of the most greatest value. So help us to seek you first and foremost and remind us of the most important things in our lives. Keep us focused on the things that matter. Thank you for the hope of heaven. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train. Bring it down. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. Fill our hearts with your spirit. Open our ears to hear your word proclaimed. Remind us that you are always with us, guiding us to be your faithful disciples. Amen. Our first reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is, in, what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. When then are we, what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? If 
It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, verse 13, and I'm reading today from the message. Another story, God's kingdom is like a pine nut that a farmer plants. It is quite small as seeds go, but in the course of years, it grows into a huge pine tree and eagles build nests in it. Another story. God's kingdom is like yeast that a woman works into the dough for dozens of loaves of barley bread and waits while the dough rises. God's kingdom is like a treasure hidden in a field for years and then accidentally found by the trespasser. The finder is ecstatic, what a find, and proceeds to sell everything he owns to raise money and buy that field. Or... God's kingdom is like a jewel merchant on the hunt for excellent pearls. Finding one that is flawless, he immediately sells everything and buys it. Or, God's kingdom is like a fishnet cast into the sea, catching all kinds of fish. When it is full, it is hauled onto the beach. The good fish are picked out and put in a tub. Those unfit to eat are thrown away. That's how it will be when the curtain comes down on history. The angels will come and call the bad fish and throw them in the garbage. There will be a lot of desperate complaining, but it won't do any good. Jesus asked, are you starting to handle all of this? They answered, yes. He said, then see how every student well-trained in God's kingdom is like the owner of a general store who can put his hands on anything you need, old or new, exactly what you need. The word of the Lord, praise to you, O Christ. Allie? Hi, Daddy. Hi. What you doing? Just playing with my dolls. Oh, good. Good. Listen, um, the other day you, you asked questions about babies and stuff. When you started sneezing? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, anyway, I was wondering if you wanted to talk about that now. Okay. Good, good. <laughs> Let me try to explain a few things. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here's what happens. When a man and a woman love each other very much, they get married. And then sometimes they decide to make a baby. Why are there babies? Right, right. Okay, I'm gonna get to that. Okay. What a man and a woman do is... No, I mean, I know that the 
the man and the woman have to do something, but why are we born? Why has God put us here? <laughs> Because that's what? <laughs> if we all go to heaven when we die, then why does God want us here first? <laughs> um, why does God want us here? Yeah, why? I heard you. <laughs> you don't want to talk about sex? No. You, ever, you ever hear the word fallopian? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, you really want to know why God wants us here first? That's a good question. You see... God is up in heaven, and, well, honey, it's very crowded up there. It is? Y yeah, yeah, and, and you don't want to be in heaven if it's crowded, right? I mean, remember when we went to Disney World, how crowded that was? Huh? I mean, it was fun, but it was too crowded, right? So God, he sends us down to earth for a little while to ease the heavenly congestion. heaven when we die, why does God want us here first? Very good questions that came from Allie in that episode. Why does God want us here? This train, as the song says, this train is bound for glory, and contrary to what Raymond told Allie, there is indeed plenty of room in that glory land for us. But we first have to live in this kingdom here on earth. So why does God want us here? Now imagine if you can, a child asking you that very same question. What, pray tell, would you answer them? Or would you just sneeze as Raymond did in that episode? So what if this life that we are living here, what of it? And, and, you know, how do you think life is going for you at this point in this life that we've been called to first before we can experience our next life? When I think about the kingdom of God here on earth, I'm going to tell you, it, it just... Maybe it's because I'm getting older, which is possible. But for me, it's, it's getting harder to see. And I read from someone who his commentary was, he actually feels as if he is living in two very different worlds. First, he says, there is God's world, the kingdom. A life where God's word is read, that God's promises are seen in the lives of people in answered prayers in coming together for worship. God's 
that peace, he says, he sees God's world. But then he says he sees this second world, this world that doesn't even acknowledge God, let alone says that God can be seen in it. And it's in this world that people are just seeming to do their own thing and seem to be operating from selfish motives. And there's hate in that world. There is injustice in that world. Politics, so much politics, and it, it's put above people. It's an ugly world. And I certainly hope that he is more wrong than he is right. But some days I really do wonder that when I watch people who spew out hateful words, when I see personal agendas being put above the love that we have been called to have for other people. Some days it feels like there is no regard for other people. Too often we say me first or, or act as if we are all that matters. Now what Jesus is telling us in this passage of a montage of, of, um, of parables is that there is definitely a connection between these two worlds. And it is in this portion of Matthew that we get a little bit of a description about what that connection is and, and how we are to live in these two very connected worlds. Now consider in particular this passage that was from the gospel. God's kingdom is like yeast that a woman works dough for dozens of loaves of barley bread and she waits. That's the key word. She waits while the dough is rising. Now yeast involves chemistry to work and it's a pretty cool process actually. And it somehow promotes this fermentation and then that which is mixed, it's mixed into, it begins to change. Have you ever forgotten to add the yeast to say a bread dough recipe or, or a pizza dough recipe? It is not a very pretty result because it is with the yeast that the dough comes to life. Jesus is telling us that this kingdom isn't a place for unleavened dough. Unleavened dough is hard and personally, I think it's quite unappetizing. Jesus instead equates the world, the kingdom, with a softer dough, the dough that's spongy and palatable, the good, fresh loaf of bread that we waited for. And so Jesus wants us here to be the yeast. He wants us here in this kingdom to be the yeast in a hardened world. And as that yeast in this kingdom here on earth, there's expectations that come with that. And just as the yeast helps the dough to rise, the expectation is our yeast in that hard world will help the kingdom to be seen. And that begins when we allow the Holy Spirit to work within us. Because we have to be changed before then we can then put that change within our world. Now, I don't know if it was ever a thing around here, because as most of you know, I'm not from around here. But there was a recipe of a starter batter that we called Amish friendship bread. And you got the starter mix from a friend, and it typically came in a Ziploc bag. And it would indeed look something like that. The, the directions may have been on a bag, or they may have been attached to that. And when you received that friendship bread, they tell you it was a 10-day commitment. But I'm gonna tell you it was a lot bigger commitment 
Now, as you received this, halfway through the process, you added ingredients to it, and then you kept that process of kneading it until the 10th day, and then you split it up into four different baggies. You kept one, and you gave three of the other ones to your friends. And then with the one you kept, you could continue to knead it and start a new process. You could bake with it. Um, you could add cool things to it. It actually was very tasty bread. You baked it, it was good. But if you didn't give some of it away, every time you, stashed, you um, separated it, your stash would grow and grow. And before you knew, knew it, the top of your refrigerator was being overtaken by Ziploc bags with the dough. It didn't do anyone else any good, you see, if you didn't share it. It was not meant to be kept solely for yourself. And in fact, sometimes you had to discard it if you weren't able to give it to someone else. That was a waste. And isn't that kind of like the knowledge that we have about the kingdom of God? We helped, we helped to grow the kingdom by sharing sharing the word, sharing how we love other people, by sharing the good news of Jesus. And having the knowledge just multiply and keep it to ourselves is not what God intends. God wants it shared. We have not been placed here in this earth to sit on our hands. We're not to be just twiddling our thumbs until it's our time to go to heaven. And when we pray, thy kingdom come and mean it, that means we are to be currently actively working within this kingdom here on earth. Jesus' montage of parables here are meant to be encouraging words for us. Encouraging words for while we wait in faith and with hope. And the parable of the yeast and the seed and all of the other ones within here tell us and suggest to us that despite obstacles and despite all indications to the contrary, God's realm of justice and peace and even freedom, it is real and it is among us now. Jesus wants us to share that bread. Jesus wants us to be the yeast. Jesus needs us to be Christ in a hurting world. And that is the only way that anything that's going wrong in this world right now is going to improve. We have to be the yeast for the unleavened, hardened world. And that, I would tell Allie, is why we have been placed here. To make the kingdom of God a place where all of God's children feel safe, that justice reigns. And we're to share that love with people just as we're to share that bread. I believe with all of my heart, this train is indeed bound for glory. But it's how we live in this present that matters. How will we live? And think about that. How will we live in these days to come with this train on the track heading to glory but work to do within the journey? Share the bread of Christ. Share the yeast of Christ so that others they come to know Christ too, so that they too will join us in our heavenly home where there is plenty of room.
Every time we gather as a faith community, as one worshiping community, we remember to set aside some time that we might lift up our concerns and our joys to God. Let us be together in prayer. Loving God, there is no treasure more precious than your love, no earthly thing that is more precious than your love through your Son, Jesus. As we trust in your love, we know that when two or three of us are gathered in your son's name, that you will hear our prayers. We lift up in our prayers those who struggle with illness. We think of Carol Piper battling cancer, Christy Teigen having skin surgery next week, Dan recovering from surgery, Beverly continuing to recover from a fall, Jeff starting chemo for a recurrence of cancer. Hannah and her family awaiting test results. We continue to keep in our prayers those who battle chemical dependency or addiction. And we ask that you help them make good choices and decisions. We ask that you be with those who aim to triumph over mental illness and depression. We think of those who are affected by the coronavirus, victims, healthcare professionals that sacrifice for our health. We continue to keep in our prayers those who are isolated or lonely for any reason, but especially recently because of the pandemic. We think of those who have lost their jobs or lost their health care. We ask that you would guide the world, national and state leaders whose leadership would help us through these most difficult days. We ask that you watch over those who are first responders in emergencies, local police, deputy sheriffs, state police, fire, emergency medical personnel. Keep them all safe as they strive to keep us safe. Please be with those who protest inappropriate violence in our communities, those who seek to eliminate systemic racism from our institutions, those persons of color who experience racism each and every day. Please be with our sisters and brothers in the LGBTQI plus community as they aim to be their authentic selves that you created. And as always, we lift up to you the most private of our prayers, the concerns and joys that we will never say out loud that only you can hear. All of these prayers, both the spoken and the unspoken, we lift up to you in the name of Jesus, our risen Savior. Amen. And now let us join together and say the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ reminds us that our treasures, our gifts from God, are most beneficial when they are used for the kingdom of God. May this be the time when we bring forth our gifts 
to be blessed by God. Let us pray together. Almighty God, there are treasures all around us, family, friends, and your abiding presence, and the love of Christ Jesus. Bless these gifts we have returned to you. Bless them that others might come to know the true treasures of your love and grace. In your holy name we pray. Amen. With a song of praise on our lips, we go forth with God. With the love of God in our hearts, we go forth with God. With a commitment to usher in God's kingdom, we go forth with God. With all that we are and all that we can be, we go forth with God. Amen. How great thou art, how great thou art. 